Hello everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a replay system in Godot 4. For my setup, I just have a simple player with W, A, S, and D movement, and I have keybinds for record, play, and stop. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and create a new node. We'll call this replay or replayer. I'm going to add a script to that. We can delete these two main functions. So the way that we're going to record everything is about every 0.1 seconds or so, we're going to take a snapshot of all the objects that we want to record. So let's create a simple array that will hold all of those objects. So at export variable recorded objects, we'll set this to be an array. And since we're working in 2D, we'll do node 2D. We also want a variable for how many frames of animation we have. So variable frames, set this to be zero. We want our recording data, so variable recording data, so this would be a blank dictionary. And also, if we're recording or not, recording gets false. Now we want our two functions for recording and playing, so function record and our function for play. Now, if we try recording every single frame, it will just crash the game. So to prevent this, we're going to add in a timer node. This should be a delay. I'm gonna set this to be about 0.1 uh, physics. And we also need to reference it inside of our script. So control drag over that. Now in a recording function, we're gonna be looping over all the recorded objects and taking its current data for the current frame. So for RO in recorded objects dot size, since we're gonna need the actual index of each of the recorded objects, that's because if RO equals zero, we need to initialize the current frame in the recording data. So Recording data, frames, gets a blank dictionary. Now let's get the current object that we're recording. So variable current object gets recorded objects, RO. Then we'll go ahead and set the recording data. So recording data with the current frame that we're on and current object dot name. Set this to be position with the current object dot global position. Now you can also add stuff like rotation and scale, but I'll let you do that on your own. Now after the for loop, we need to increment our frames by one and also call delay.start. And delay at start, if we are recording, call the record function. And one last thing at the top of our recording function, if we are not recording, we need to stop the delay and return. Now in our play function, we'll be playing back every single frame at the same speed that we recorded them at. So for f in frames, we'll create a new tween function. So variable tween gets create tween. Now we're gonna loop back over our objects. However, this time we don't actually need the index. So just recorded objects and not getting in the size. We'll first check if this is the first frame. So f zero, then if it is, we need to set everything right away. So r, dot global position gets recording data passing in the first frame along with the object name and getting the position value that we set before. However, if it's not the initial frame, we want to transition smoothly to each other frame. So tween dot tween property passing in the current object. We want to set the global position to that of the one in the recording data and at the 0.1 second interval that we set before. Now, after we've set all that, we need to wait for the transition to finish before moving on to the next frame. So await get tree dot create timer at the 0.1 second interval that we set before dot time out. Now, after the animation has finished playing, we want to reset the frames to zero and also the recording data to a null dictionary. Now, it's gonna add a script to our main function. We'll take in our player. We don't need these two functions. We'll create a simple input event function. So input event. If event dot is action pressed record. We'll set replayer dot recording to true and replayer dot record. Now, if event dot is action pressed stop replayer dot recording gets false since we actually need to trigger the stop we need to also call replayer dot record 
And finally, if event dot is action pressed play, we will call replayer dot play. Now, one final thing we need to do is instead of a replayer, we need to add in the objects we want to record. So we'll add in the player and any other objects you want to record. And now if we press play and we press the record button, then we can move around our player. And if we press the stop button and then press the play button, you'll see that it will go back to the initial position and play the animation. And just to demonstrate multiple objects, I've gone ahead and added in a second player that has different inputs and added it to our objects array. Now, if we press play and we record, we can move our individual players just like so, and then stop and then replay. And you'll see that both objects are affected. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this story helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.